Nala, what do you think? Do we need to install a ground rod or not? In this video, I'm going to show you what an interlock kit system is and how to properly ground your generator when using this system. Before we begin, you need to understand the difference between a bonded and floating neutral generator. Inside the generator, there are four bus bars similar to what you would have at your main electrical panel. I have color coded them. This is a four wire system, line one, line two, neutral and ground. In the United States, we use a split phase power system where the voltage between line one and line two is 240 volts while the voltage between line one and neutral is 120. Inside a bonded generator, there is a physical bonding jumper that is connecting the neutral and ground bus bars together. A floating neutral generator does not have this bonding jumper. The neutral and ground bus bars are isolated, meaning they are not touching. Modern generators come with a bonded neutral from the factory as shown by this sticker. Make sure to check your user manual to confirm what configuration you have. An interlock kit system looks like this. There is a power inlet box installed next to your panel that allows you to connect your generator to your panel using a heavy duty power cord. This is either a 30 amp or 50 amp cord. There is also a metal plate installed over your main panel that prohibits you from running two power sources simultaneously, depending on the position of the plate. Let me show you the power flow. Generator power off, utility power on, or utility power off, generator power on. If you have this configuration or plan on utilizing this configuration, the wiring diagram for this entire setup looks like this. When it comes to generator grounding, I want to highlight the behavior of the gray neutral wire shown on your screen. Here you can see the neutral is fully continuous. If you shut off the generator circuit breaker here, the circuit breaker only opens line one and line two. The neutral wire is continuous at all times. Because this neutral wire is continuous, this entire setup is considered as one single system. So the neutral to ground bonding jumper at your generator will need to be removed because your electrical panel already has this installed here. By code, only one bonding jumper is allowed per electrical system. The continuous neutral allows you to use your existing grounding electrode here. So no additional ground rod is required by code as shown in this exhibit. Refer to your user manual for instructions on how to remove this bonding jumper. When you do this modification, you are required to install a new sticker on your generator. This is a code requirement. I'm taking these examples straight from the NEC 2020 codebook. If you live in the US, you most likely need to abide by these rules. Do a quick Google search to confirm. These are very important grounding details no other channels are talking about. If you found this helpful, consider subscribing for more electrical videos.